Sean Keller at large. It's the final push for candidates ahead of Tuesday's primaries. That it is. So for a breakdown of the biggest races happening here in Massachusetts, here's John Keller. Well, good morning. This is it. Less than 48 hours to go until the polls open uh, in your community for primary election day. And this morning, we're going to look at at least some of the more hotly contested local races with two razor sharp political observers. On the right of your screen, Matt Stout, reporter for the Boston Globe. Welcome, Matt. Yes. And Joanna Weiss, editor of Experience Magazine. Welcome, Joanna. Hi. Real quickly, what is Experience it's Magazine? Published by Northeastern University, but not about Northeastern about uh, the value and power of experience, which is what, uh, what Northeastern cares about in education. So it's a general interest magazine unveiled this week. Uh, excited to have people read it, expmag.com. Good luck with that. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you for being here. So let's start with the seventh congressional district Democratic primary race. Longtime incumbent Mike Capuano, Boston City Councilor Ayanna Presley. And when it started, this was kind of billed as a, as a test of whether insurgent sentiment within the party uh, could impact an entrenched incumbent, not like uh, Crowley down there in New York who'd been kind of a ghost congressman. No one had seen him around a long time. Mike Capuano is around for the most part. Uh, Presley has a strong base uh, and has run well in her council races. Is that how this race turned out to be? Did it turn out to be about change and this wave of dissatisfaction with the status quo in any perceptible way. Matt, you want to start? I'm not sure if it's a wave of dissatisfaction, but maybe this hunger for something new, a new voice. I mean, that's how Ayanna Presley is kind of uh, presents herself because, you know, they agree on so many issues, yeah. but it's sort of, I could bring a different perspective than Mike Capuano can, and Mike Capuano saying, well, look at everything I've done. So I, I, I wouldn't say there's dissatisfaction with Mike Capuano, but yes, I think it would be a test of, like, do people just want to hear a different voice, see a different face? representing them down there. You know, Joe, go ahead. And I was going to say, this race, like several others in Massachusetts, speaks to the challenge of the, the Democratic pipeline here. I mean, there are a lot of people who are ambitious politicians, who have a lot of skills, who want to do something and rise to the next level. And there are a lot of incumbents who have been there for a really long time who are popular enough, you know, because they, they've been doing a fine job. And so there's this question for the voters of, is change for the sake of change, for the sake of a new voice who might do things a little bit differently, worth you know, letting go of someone who you like. Well, you know, the Presley campaign gets mad when you suggest that this, a lot of this race is about identity politics. That, Both campaigns that rather, about that. Rather than policy, that, you know, uh, the main difference is you've got this younger African-American woman who's positing herself as a voice for people who've felt voiceless within the district. Uh, isn't that, in fact, a significant factor here? I mean, it's part of definitely Presley's message is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm representing and, and I want to bring to the fore issues that affect people who may not have been at the fore before. Right. And I think that's going to affect whether, you know, whether she can pull this off or not. Can she draw in people, particularly within the city limits of Boston, who maybe haven't voted before, haven't voted in, in these congressional races before, but are going to be so enthused by her as a figure and her image and her voice that they're going to come out to vote? The day after Labor Day, Matt, what a tough day to try to pull off what she just described. Well, yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, they've, a lot, there's been a lot of discussion about why it was obviously chose for September 4th. And, I mean, after a holiday weekend, it's, it's, it's going to be a challenge, even for someone like Mike Capuano, who obviously over 20 years has a lot of people who have been behind him that you think he would be able to drive out to the polls. But the same question is for him. Will he get those reliable voters to vote for him? It's, it, it comes down to That's that. a great point. It could work either way. It could mean just the old reliable show. Or it could mean the an activist energized base has has a bigger bounce because of the lower turnout. I guess we'll find out Tuesday night. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the longest standing incumbent who's facing a tough race on Tuesday as our primary preview continues. Please stay with us.